Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and today we're going to talk about digoxin. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over pharmacology. And as always, after you watch this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this medication. So let's get started. When studying these drugs for exams or even administering them to a patient, you always want to make sure that you are familiar with the drug. So to help yourself do that, anytime you come across a drug name, you want to ask yourself the following five questions. Number one, what's the name of the drug? Specifically that family name. What drug category does this drug fall into? Because that's going to tell you a lot about how that drug works. Next, you want to ask yourself, what is this drug used for? And that's going to tell you why you're giving this medication to the patient. They have some type of condition that the physician feels like the patient would benefit from this drug. Then you want to ask yourself, what are your responsibilities as a nurse when dealing with this drug? What are you watching for, monitoring for? Then you want to ask yourself, what are those side effects? The common side effects that may be seen with this drug. And then lastly, you want to ask yourself those education pieces that you need to provide to that patient. So if they do go home, on this drug, they will know how to take it properly. So to help us remember all those questions, let's remember the word nurse, because whenever we're administering medications, we have to think as a nurse. So first, let's talk about the name. So we're dealing with the drug digoxin, and this drug is part of the cardiac glycoside family. And these drugs help the heart pump more efficiently by inhibiting the normal function of the sodium and potassium pump. Now this pump is found on the cell membrane of our cells that make up our muscle fibers. And muscle fibers play a huge role in how strong your heart is able to contract. So if we alter that pump, we're going to alter the contractility of this heart muscle. Now another thing digoxin does is it alters how fast or how slow your heart beats. So it's going to alter the rate and it can alter how fast these impulses are sent through the electrical conduction system of the heart. Now those three things I just described are the inotropic, chronotropic, and dromotropic actions of the heart. And digoxin either affects that in a positive or negative way. So let's talk about how it affects the heart. And you want to remember these actions because tests love to ask about that when referring to digoxin. So digoxin causes a positive inotropic effect on the heart. And what this means is that it causes the heart to squeeze or contract harder. So it increases cardiac contractility, which in the end is going to increase stroke volume. Another thing it does is it has a negative chronotropic effect on the heart, which causes the heart to beat at a slower rate. It also causes a negative dramatropic effect, which is going to cause impulses to be sent slower through the AV node. Now when we take all these actions and combine them together, what's the result for our patient's heart? The heart is going to squeeze more blood out. So more blood is going to leave the heart. So whenever we're doing that, we're increasing stroke volume. And stroke volume is the amount of blood that is leaving this ventricle with each beat. And when we increase that, we're going to increase cardiac output. And we want good cardiac output because if we don't have a high enough cardiac output, your organs aren't being perfused and the patient can die. And remember, cardiac output is calculated by taking the heart rate times the stroke volume. And stroke volume, one of the big things that affects stroke volume was contractility. And digoxin increases contractility. So we will get increased cardiac output. Now let's talk about what it's used for. Digoxin is used to treat heart failure, cardiogenic shock, or dysrhythmias like atrial fibrillation or a flutter. And why we would want to throw on digoxin in some of these patients is because with these conditions, there's issues with the heart pumping and emptying correctly. Either like with heart failure or cardiogenic shock, there's failure of this heart as a pump. Those muscle fibers aren't contracting. Like a lot of times when my cardiac infarction happens, these cells die that play a role in how our heart contracts, so the heart just doesn't pump very well. 
or the electrical conduction system like an AFib, A-flutter is di just discharging impulses way too fast and is altering how the heart is able to empty. Now let's talk about responsibilities. What's our responsibility as the nurse? Well, with DIG, we really want to monitor for toxicity because patients can become toxic with this drug. So what are those early signs and symptoms that, hey, your patient may be experiencing digoxin toxicity? Well, they're gonna be GI related, like nausea, vomiting, anorexia. They can also report vision changes. So if your patient reports like double vision, blurred vision, or especially that the color of their vision, like they're seeing yellowish, greenish halos in their vision, that is a warning sign. And it can also cause, cause dysrhythmias, which tends to be a little bit later. Now, digoxin has a therapeutic range that you need to remember, so commit this to memory. That's another one of those lovely test questions. The range is 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. Anything greater than 2 is considered toxic. So let's say you have a scenario and the dig level's high. What are you going to do? What's your nursing action? You're going to hold the dose, notify the MD. Now. Um, what is the antidote for digoxin? What can reverse it? It's easy to remember, it's called digibine. Now what can cause digoxin toxicity? Well, electrolyte imbalances can. And this is another part that you definitely want to remember. A big electrolyte imbalance that can cause dig toxicity is a low potassium level called hypokalemia. And this is where that level drops less than 3.5. Now, whenever a patient for a cardiac reason, especially like heart failure or something like that, where fluid is backing up in the heart, going to the lung, causing a lot of edema, the patient may also be on a diuretic to help remove that extra fluid. So if a patient is on a diuretic, you have to watch those ones that waste potassium through the urine. We're talking about like loop diuretics, specifically like furosemide, Lasix, that's a popular one because it can lower the potassium level. If they're on digoxin as well, they're at risk for having a low potassium level. So you want to monitor that very closely. Other electrolyte imbalances is like a low magnesium level with hypomagnesemia, and this is a level less than 1.5, or a high calcium level, hypercalcemia, and this is where that level gets higher than 10.2. Now, which patients are at most risk for digoxin toxicity? Because they have altered liver and renal function. Usually it's decreased. Well, our elderly population, because these systems aren't working as great as they should, and this is where this drug is really removed from the body, we have to watch them on digoxin. Another big takeaway about the responsibilities of a nurse is whenever we're administering this medication, we wanna measure the apical pulse. If you don't know how to do that, I have a whole video on how to do that. And you're gonna do this for one full minute, and you will hold the dose of dig if it is less than 60 beats per minute in an adult, less than 70 beats per minute in a child, or less than 90 to 110 beats in an infant. Next is side effects. What other side effects can this patient have with this drug? They can have fatigue, headache, diarrhea, or thrombocytopenia. And then the last part of our questions was the education pieces. What are we gonna teach this patient who's going to be taking digoxin? Well, of course, we want to teach them how to recognize those signs and symptoms of toxicity. And especially those early signs and symptoms that were related to the GI system, the nausea, the vomiting, and anorexia. Also, that they need to keep their appointments for when they need drug levels drawn or we're gonna monitor their electrolytes or their liver or renal function. And just let the patient know that they're really important to keep so we can make sure they're not getting digoxin toxicity. And if they are on drugs, that are wasting the potassium like those diuretics, the importance of consuming foods that are rich in potassium, which would be like potatoes, pork, tomatoes, oranges, 
avocado, spinach, bananas, things like that to keep that level high. Because remember, hypokalemia can cause digoxin toxicity. And how to measure their pulse, how to count their heart rate before they take their drug every time, and when to call the doctor if their pulse rate is too low, and talk to them about those parameters that we went over with this drug. Okay, so that wraps up this review over digoxin. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.